Thank you. And hi out there. Welcome to Mnet's Review Plus. My name is Paul Ditchfield, and tonight, along with Yanni Duplessis, I'm going to coax you through some great entertainment, including a chat with chat show host John Burks of 702. Goedenavond en welkom bij ons derde aanbieding van Review Plus en een speciale welkom aan ons eerste gast John Burks. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, welcome, John. John. Hi, Paul. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Just before we chat to John, let's watch him in action in the morning at 702. And now on 702, it's the John Burks Show with talk, news, music, and prizes. John Burks, outspoken and controversial, that's entertainment. It's the zodiac sign Libra that we're discussing with our astrologer, Sharon Eisninger. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, John. Welcome back as we uh, join hands and go stargazing. <laughs> the zodiac sign Libra. I mentioned it to a friend of mine from Clarksdorp, and he said, no, don't worry about it. My wife will be very interested as she's a librarian. <laughs> Yes, we're gazing at stars with Sharon Eisenhower this morning. Right, and you're yeah. gazing with us. And what star are you gazing at? I'm at Libra and I'm, my husband's a Pisces. Pisces. Yes. So, so, so your husband's a, a fish. That's right, yeah. He's a fish. Yeah. Right. Does he enjoy water? Very I mean, much. does he swim a lot and he's, huh? he's no, keen on going down the coast? He doesn't really swim a lot, but he loves fishing on that. Yeah. <laughs> is that, no, seriously, is that true of the Absolutely. Pisces? Again, I see a fish, so a fish, because a fish, he should be near the water, Absolutely. he enjoys swimming, he, uh, he fishes. goes fishing. Yeah, he, he fishes. <laughs> He's a fisher, right? Yes. Yeah. Is he a good-looking guy? Uh, he looks he... like a cop, huh? Yes, yeah. much. Great. Okay, Shalmay, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, and today we're talking uh, about uh, desire, sexual desire. Again, right. it was so popular last week, we uh, figured we'd continue with the subject right. today. W what is the average amount of t times a week that a person makes love generally? <laughs> from your experience, what okay. you, this, my, my, my it expectations really, and reasons? Are you you're questioning uh, Dr. Paul on this yes. one? Yep. Okay, there, uh, would you like to comment on this No, one? no, no. Okay. No, because it's... Okay. Uh, no, no, reason I, this, reason I ask, it's a good right, question, but the reason I ask this is because it becomes a kind of what, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, you, you know, Joe, I want to tell you, you, you probably know a lot more about sex therapy than... Uh, Thank you, Doc. ...than a lot of people. <laughs> John, thank you. you. You enjoy yourself, don't you? I do. You really enjoy yourself. I really now, do. Now, on there they had the elephant, the elephant trumpet. Now, is this, does this mean you have a fantastic memory or what? I'm a, I'm a rogue. <laughs> is that why they put the trumpet in there? I don't know why they put the trumpet there. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of sort Is of that fish. the first time you've ever done TV? I mean, been on TV? The, that particular clip? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. What, what about does, your research? Does it show? No, no, it doesn't show. You look wonderful. <laughs> the research for your program, it's always very, very interesting. How do you get the research for? for we, the have, uh, we have a, a research team, Ilana Surat and my producer, Nikki Carter, and Ann Matthews. And we have meetings uh, twice a week and, so, so and debates, you, you know, what's coming up and, and who we'll be talking to and, and why we should be talking with them. So do you have a script or is everything... Oh, no. No, no script. Could that ever be scripted? No, 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 never. no that's off the no. cuff. Yeah. This couldn't be scripted either. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about this, this love-hate relationship you have with, with your, your, your listeners? I mean, sometimes you get really cross with them, sometimes uh, you, you show them you love them, them. <laughs> but now, what, yeah. how do you handle animosity? Do you get it in the street? I mean, I know you, you're pretty used to it from some people. I've, 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 I've got to believe in my old age that you can never win them all, you can never satisfy them all. You win some, you lose some. I've won a few in my day, and I've lost a, a heck of a lot. <laughs> but but it, it used to worry me. You know, I used to get dreadful calls in the wee small hours of the morning at home, and, and, and dreaded letters, poison-penned letters of people you, you know, who hated me. And they still do, but you can never win them all. You can never satisfy all the people all the time. John, it's so important to get a talkative guest. How do, and after so many broadcasts, it must, must be difficult to get guests. How do you decide who you're going to use? Well, we, you know, we, 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 we never decide on the guest because the guest would be what we may term as the ideal guest. And this is the chance we take, you know. You may have an author on the show who may be a good writer, but by no means a good talker or a good guest yeah. on the talk show, or a scientist or uh, an educationist or whoever. So you hope 
that they'll be able to impart their, their knowledge on, uh, on the air, you know. But very often it doesn't work that way, and then it becomes difficult because you've got to stretch and you've got to, what are the terms we use in the business? You know, you've really got to milk and pan and do all the other things. Mm -hmm. So you hope that the guest will be entertaining and, and, and communicate well and, and, and talk well. Yeah, it but doesn't happen all the time. Generally, you, you pick people who are experts in their field. But obviously, you have an opinion, too, as do the, do the listeners. Now, what happens there? Dr. Paul was just about to give, the, <laughs> give you the opportunity of answering. Yeah. Are you allowed to do that? Am I allowed to? Uh, I didn't quite get that. No, you, he was going to say, look, you answer this question. Yeah. Are you at liberty to say, yes, well, uh, sex 17 times a day is the right thing to do, so well, you all I'm go back now and you do it. Sexually speaking, I am, because they <laughs> know I know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but on any other matters, no. <laughs> but what would Dr. Paul have done if you'd have said, no, this is definitely it, and he would have said, no, it isn't? What would happen? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I could argue it. You can? You know. Oh, yes. But then you argue just from a personal point of view. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's my personal, it's my own opinion, my personal opinion. Talking about opinions, what's your opinion of how much money radio jocks who are successful like yourself, uh, what, what is your opinion on the, the large amount of monies you receive? And is it that much? Uh, yeah, in I know, you know, there's been so much talk as to who earns what and who in the business in the world of radio. I'm not too sure if I believe it all. Do you believe everything no. that you read in newspapers? No, I don't, but I was just wondering yeah. whether you could shed some more light on it, because obviously at the end of the day, nobody actually finishes up with all that money in their pocket. Mm. You'd be what? surprised. <laughs> really? Uh, John, <laughs> you yeah. took off two years, but then eventually you only took off one year. Why did that happen? I, uh, yeah, I, I, I missed the radio very much. I missed 702, and I missed all the people I work with. And uh, they kind of indicated that it would be nice for come me to back, be back. back. Yeah. Right. Mm. So I, I cut it short, as you say, by a, by a year. And it's nice to be back. It's lovely to be back. I hope the audience are happy that I'm back. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's sure lovely are. to be All back. you hear is yeah. John Burns could, could, already. Could I, could I get back to the money story again? Yes, please. You know, I, I think that it's, it's time that, that radio people and television people earn fair salaries. You know, you've been in the business for a long time, yeah, as yeah. I, I have. have. I have. And, and as you go back in time, we were always paid a pittance. We were yeah. always demanded to give so much. And yet You're making me cry, John. Yeah, and yet receive so little. And I think it's time. Mm. You know, it's the whole entertainment industry. It's absolutely. Oh, but absolutely. for instance, what sort of a car do you drive? I, uh, <laughs> I drive... <laughs> Go on, this will be funny. They'll enjoy, I, you'll enjoy this out I there. Have a, 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 I have a, a little sports car, a little Alfa Romeo Spider. It's an Alfa. It? But it's a 72. It's yeah. not what? an 89 or whatever. What car okay. is it? The Spider. Alpha, Alpha Spider, Spider, the convertible, we're, yeah. We're not fishing for donations, but mine's a, a 72 Mazda 323. <laughs> <laughs> John, what do you do in your spare time? I, uh, I play a lot of squash. Funny, I, I was playing squash with Derek Watts you just in that fame this afternoon. And I believe you won. <laughs> no, I did not. No, he whipped me. He whipped me. <laughs> you yeah, you, you play a lot player. of squash. Is that the only sport you, you do? I play a lot of squash and I read. I have, uh, I have some hobbies. I collect... Uh, I collect strange things, but I, I, also, I, I love pets. I'm a little farm boy from the Western Transvaal originally. Don't kid me. So I have two little marmoset monkeys, and I have, uh, oh I have parrots, and I have all kinds of strange little animals running around. Uh, if you I'm, I'm an animal lover. Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you there. I, oh. If you had the opportunity of broadcasting from home, would you do it? Yes, I would indeed. Do you remember, what was that old radio program, Tea with Mr. Green? And yes, of course here I, I am, talking to you from under the old peach tree with the birds twittering away. That's and what right. What a yeah. lovely day. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that kind of thing with the monkeys chirping away and, and the birds and whatever and the dogs barking. John, I've listen, sorry. <laughs> how, no, go, 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 go. How did you get into radio? Yes. Oh, many, many years ago. I, I was always keen on radio. Ever since I was two bricks in the Tiggy High as a little schoolboy in Clarkstorp, I was never an academic. But always keen club. on radio. And truly it was, and, and, and God bless him because I love him dearly, Charles Fortune, as a little boy, I was always keen on cricket. And I used to listen to Can't all the cricket commentaries. Come give us a bit of Charles Fortune. Oh, how I enjoyed Charles doing those <laughs> cricket commentaries. And oh, I miss him. So I do wish, Charles, if, you, if you're watching, you'd get back and do it some more. <laughs> I love him. He, he's a dear man. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was through the likes of the Charles Fortunes of the world and John Arlett of the BBC and, and Rex Austin, I thought, that's what I'd love to do. Theatre of the mind, paint yeah. all those wonderful well, pictures. Well, you do paint these pictures, and you're I try. unbelievably successful, and everybody loves you. And you've had too many early mornings. 
So why don't you and I have a late night? Thanks for being with us, John. Thank you. Thanks for all. John, baie dankie dat jy by ons gekuier het. En hoopelijk sal die rest van die land ook eendag die geleend het kry om na sy program te luister. Thanks, John.